It's Tooth Gusk, Tooth Gusk and Flea Emily Channel. Just cooking in my PJs with an apron. <laughs> yeah. Uh. -oh. Today, Scott, I'm finally making Siberian beef stew. Uh, it's Sunday, the video of course will be released on Wednesday. Uh, to quickly turn my camera around. You, did, you, you see how I, I quarter the potatoes and the carrots? Um, you're going to just put that in the hot water. And just let it sit. Don't boil it because otherwise it would be too done. That's going to soften them up. Because they're going to go on the stew, stew towards the end. Um, and then I'll, now I'm going to do my meat. My onions and my then my meat. See, people are saying, okay, to keep your, uh, your eyes from uh, watering, you can put the onion in water, uh, you know, you would that too, right? You say you put the onion in water, but me, I, I don't. I just take my, my chef's, my chef's knife, and I cut the ends off. Get a hold of the onion tight. These are some big onions. I don't want all the skin. I'm going to peel in my stew. But I cut the onion off. Did I just, did I just, you see, now I've got the place to work, right? Did I just cut it in half? Pretty simple, eh? Take whatever, how much filling you want off. Usually I take the first layer or two. Then you get the nice inside part of the onion. Let the knife do the work. See, you said the point right here. Have it laying down. You can, I usually put my finger on the top, kind of like this. You don't want to hold the knife tight like this, or you don't want to hold it like really loose like this either. You want to hold it, you know, just tight enough. You know, just you know, they have control of the blade. And then, and you just, I just slice it. With my shaky hand, the best I can. And then I put it together. And you better be careful here when you get towards the end. See, you don't curl your fingers, you don't keep an eye on all your fingers. That makes a nice sliced onion. Now I'm, I'm gonna, I'll do the other one now. All right. I cut my meat up in smaller pieces. Um, because you know the stew meat's always a little bit too big for me, so I like to cut it smaller. 
So I did all that. You have to have the meat partially thawed, not frozen, but partially thawed because it's easier to cut that way. And it's also more, uh, it's a safer handling practice to handle it because uh, you don't want to handle it completely raw. Uh, I put a lot of stuff on here and I season the meat first. Now a lot of people, they, they put the, the, the meat in the pan and they say, oh, what do I want to put on here? Boom, 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 boom. It doesn't work its way into the meat. So this is my trick. And this is the way I also do my chili. Uh, next year I'll do a chili video, which has been, has been requested too. And, and it's going to be liberal. I mean, especially with the garlic and the salt. You got to be liberal because, you know, you got to bring, bring out that flavor. Alright. Let's see, here's the leaf majorum. Uh, the leaf time. Leaf majorum is not open. This should be a one that's, that's opening here though. Yep. I had two leaf majorums, good. Because this was running a little low. See, you know. Now that song, Percy Sage, was made in time. Well, that's pretty much all the stuff I put on here, except I don't put the rosemary on it. Look at that, look at that leaves. You yeah, really have to shake it to get the leaves out in these small containers. I pound it. This is one of my second ingredients, the little tarragon. Tarragon. And yeah, you want the big leaves on there. This is dry spices. Um, I don't use that. This is dry. I don't have the leaf time. I rather have the leaf time. And usually what you do with dry spice, especially if you, especially with thyme or something like that, to really get it going. I get I sprinkle it in my hand, you rub it in your hand, and then you put it on there. See that's more than enough. That's the powdered thyme, so that was more than enough on that one. You take the fresh ground black pepper. You know, the, the fresh ground pepper, that, that brings out a lot of flavor. This is rustic. There's a, there's a lot of spice on here. But when you eat it, it doesn't taste spicy. It just tastes real seasoned. Right, Joe? Right. Because I put a little bit of cayenne. Plus paprika. Let me try to use up this paprika right Joe. Right. This is the same thing I put this is the same way I do my um um stroganoff. Stroganoff meat I do the same same way. I'm really sucking it down. I'm over here by my onion right now, sorry guys. You get to really get a nice little crisp to it and really get the saute down. This is rusty cast iron cooking. This is my secret ingredient. All spice. Now this I will put in the palm of my hand. If you don't want too much all spice, it's a strong one. See? Now this is why my hands were scrubbed really good. I worked at the meat, worked all the stuff into the meat. All that stuff, into, like I said, the same way I did my chili and the same way I do my um, 
strong enough. That one was also requested. The stroganoff has a couple, has more of the, of the hotter spice, has more of the uh, cayenne. I put a little chili powder in that one, and then I uh, then I add a whole crap load more paprika plus more paprika one after I put the sour cream on. Stroganoff has a lot more spicy spice. Spicy. That's it. You can see, I can just grab the whole mound now and put this it in there. See, I whooped it in. And I'll the mound of meat. So I'm going to whoop down. Now you can see the onion and the meat. It's going to cook down, it's going to have a lot of flavor. Now yes, I will put uh, water in this pan, but right now I'm going to get some of the crust, uh, what do you call it, crunchiness on the meat, but having it in this hot pan. And then when I put the water in there, I got a big lid underneath, and I'll just let it simmer. And then I'll, and I'll then after that will come back, and I'll show you how to do some of the rest of it, of course. Because everything gets added at a certain time. But after this cooks down, then I'm making into the sauce. And then this is a different type of stew. This has the tomato in there, and the tomato base, oh, it's, it's awesome. And I'm just going to let this cook now. I'm going to put it like a cup of water, and then just let it simmer down. Oh, right. Hear that? Put on my big lid. It, it doesn't even fit completely on my cast iron pan. This lid goes to, it, it's, a, it's a deep cooker. I make my pasta in when I make my uh, uh, pasta bourguignese, spaghetti bourguignese, or but look, here you go. I got the water in the pan. I got Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. Lee and Perrin's. That's the stuff you want. Why? Because it's the best stuff. And it doesn't have high fructose. You know, like uh, all these sauces that you buy, including Worcestershire, they have high fructose in it. Not in the appearance. It's still made the way that they always made it. Let's see. I got my. I had my water simmering for a while now, so I'm gonna add some Worcestershire to give it some more. That's gonna add to that flavor, make it really rustic. I'm gonna let that cook in. I'm going to just keep that, keep, that, keep that lid on there, keep that simmering. Yes, it has lots of water in there because it's in the cast iron. And the water cooks out fast in the cast iron, cast iron gets hotter. But yeah, yeah there you go. This is going to be awesome. Right. All right, my friends, see how this meat is all nice and cooked down and tender. And look at the vegetables. They're nice and tender as well. You can actually bite into that. See, watch. And that's what you want because the meat's already tender, so the stuff's cooked. The vegetables are cooked, so that way you can throw it in there. Um, we'll show you how to make, how to thicken this up and make it the tomato, uh, the tomato base. Three hours to cook. Keep it here on low heat, around four. Keep adding water in it. I stayed upstairs on my laptop, listen to videos, did Facebook, did all that. And, but you know, I wanted to stay in here to make sure that it didn't cook over because it cooks hot in these pans. So you really have to watch it. So you have to be around. 
It's not one of those dishes you can just put in a crock pot, right, Joe? No. This is a dish you have to be home. Um, could have like a couple, three of these heaping. And I'm going to thicken this up. See that? See how it's starting to thicken up now? It's the same thing you do with other stews. Except this is going to have tomatoes. That's going to be the good part. And we'll have here. If you have any hair like here, make sure it's tied. That's for certain. Right, Joe? Yeah. See how that thickens up? Now I'm going to add some of this. Here's your vegetables, but look, just add some of that. I'll turn it up a little bit, what do you think? Mm. When this thickens up, I'm going to add the paste. The paste is going to make it thick. See, it's getting nice and thick. Doesn't that look good? It looks fine. Looks good. And a can of paste and a can of sauce. Now you want to cook this out for a while because the can taste, you may want to get that can taste out of here. That's for certain. I'm going to add the sauce right to that. Right to that. It's like I'm making a tomato gravy with the meat. This is how you make a tomato gravy. And I make my tomato gravy with my meatloaf. But you want to cook this canned taste out and you want to cook that flour out. Oh wow. Mm. I'm mixing it in. I'm just getting all that stuff out of there and mixing it in. That meat really cooks down. That's why you want to make sure the vegetables are cooked. Because see this is almost pretty much done almost. Once you glue this and cook this out. Um, tomatoes and basil. Now this is where I make sure my hands are clean. See my fingernails, everything's been scrubbed. I gotta trim them though. You pour, I pour the tomatoes right in your hand and you crush them. This is the messy and fun part. This is where kids would come in. You just tell your kids and say, hey, you want to crush tomatoes? They would love getting their hands dirty. Right? Yep. Right up here is my basil. I'm going to sprinkle in some basil. This is where I sprinkle in the, the basil. It'll go good with the tomato. It will take, oh, that will also take some of that can, take that can taste out. I'm going to cook it. When all that is cooked, when all that is cooked down, which it pretty much is now, isn't it? I'm going to drain my vegetables. Turn it 
back now. I already showed you that they're nice and soft. This is really taking shape. Oh, Alright, now, this is the last thing. I get the frozen piece. So I put the whole bag in, I'll have to. I don't know how much you want to put in there. Well, I think I'm just going to cover the top. Looks good, just covering the top. Yeah, it looks fine. And this is it. I'm just going to let that simmer and that's... Keep it in. That's my Siberian beef stew. Mm. Nice and hearty. Tomatoes and the vegetables, the peas. The really wouldn't tend to meet. Mm. Comment bro, uh, another food service suggestion. Uh, cooking in my PJ video. Uh, for um, I know I had chili request and a couple of my stroganoff requests. I did do a stroganoff video, but not, you know, didn't show how to make it. Um, I'm gonna let that simmer, and thanks for watching. All right, my friend. This is it. Big pot of slowly simmered Siberian beef stew in the good old fashioned cast iron cooking. Got my uh, my plate. Got some nice. What are these called? Uh, Hawaiian sweet rolls. Hawaiian sweet roll. Oh, the best stuff ever. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a taste of this. The peas and everything. So I'm trying to get everything on it. Thumbs up. Keep the comments and subscriptions coming. Got a couple of new subscribers. Thanks for the new ones. I don't know I highly doubt if I'm going to have a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, but maybe maybe 500 if I'm lucky. That'd be cool. But this is my last year doing YouTube. and Take care. Blessings always. Stay safe from the coronavirus.